Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome to the first running video with the Corelli Kagama. Now, you haven't seen much of this truck yet. You really didn't see any of the install or anything like that. That is because I was sick and I'm still kind of getting over things now, so I do sound a little bit funny. But there is a lot going on in this video today. So it's the first run of the Kagama. It is the first time we are using the Radiolink RC6GS version 3 radio. First time we've ran the Rocket 4282-1780KV. And we also have this Power Hobby 400MG servo that I haven't used yet either. So there's a whole lot going on. Mostly we'll be focusing on the truck in general and probably the radio. I might do kind of a separate video just to let you know how everything goes today. But either way, we're out. We're going to have a good time. I do have the jump set up but i'm not doing anything crazy this is not going to be like my first running video with the asuka it is cold it's about minus two minus three right now and i have kind of destroyed the asuga and sort of destroyed the mojave in this weather it's just cold on the plastics and i've broken a lot of parts that i probably would not have broke if it wasn't for the fact that it's cold out and there's no snow or anything right now there's no cushion i mean there's a little bit on the ground but there's no cushion there for landings and stuff so this is just going to be more of a first run video. We're going to see how that 1780 is running with the pinion. We're running a 17 tooth pinion right now, stock spur and all that kind of stuff. But stay tuned because I will have a video guys shortly after kind of going over the whole setup and what I've changed, diff fluids and all that kind of stuff. But either way, I just want to get this thing running. All right, guys, so here we go. Like I said, first run Kagama, first run of the Radiolink RC6 GS. And yes, it's cold. You can tell by my gloves. My finger positioned in there. Oh, there's reverse. <laughs> so I can definitely tell guys, this thing's gonna be fast because I'm just blipping the throttle. Oh, that was like a third throttle right there. And uh, so this has the M2C 10 millimeter wheel extenders on it and you guys can see this thing turns like crazy especially when you get off the throttle look at that and again guys that's with the 10 millimeter extenders I'm just gonna bring that in closer so you guys can kind of see yeah that's pretty decent that's I like that oh lay this thing's gonna be fast Oh, jeez. Oh. All right, yeah, guys. This 1780 is ripping. That's like half throttle when it lifts right there. Okay, this thing's moving. This thing's really fast. <laughs> Whoa, jeez, guys. Holy man. You know, my, it was funny when I was buying this motor for this truck, a few people I had talked to, you know, they had kind of said how this truck was heavier than the other Corellis and all this kind of stuff. So that's why I had gone with the 1780 to kind of compensate for a little bit of the weight, but still have some good RPMs and stuff. But this thing is, is when I got everything in it, all the electronics and even the battery today, I kind of just picked it up and was like, this thing doesn't weigh much at all. Like, it has weight, of course, but... Like, I can't even get on the throttle. Like, I think I've done three quarters. Yeah. Wow. What a machine. This is gonna be a fast, fast truck. And since I don't plan on overly aluminizing it, <laughs> if that made any sense, uh, yeah, this thing will, will retain its, jeez, it's gonna retain its speed. All right, let's take it to the jump. 
We'll do a couple of nice little jumps, nothing crazy. I've only got the 4,000 6S in here at the moment. And I was kind of thinking like, oh, it's gonna give me a lot of runtime. But then I remembered that I've got a lot bigger ESC in this truck, so it might not last the same as, let's say the Max 8 Gen 2 type thing. But first impressions guys is everything feels great. So truck feels good. Steering is awesome. Motor is powerful. Uh, and the radio guys, well, you know what? Here, let's just do this. Let's just drive. Let's just drive. I don't know what's over. Hopefully it's not like soaking wet or anything like that because I can't tell, but we're way over there and we're turning, we're coming back. I mean, I don't see myself ever getting further than that. Look at this thing. Okay, we're about maybe, and we're still, holy, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's kind of funny guys, right now, uh, first impressions with this motor is, it's, it's like the truck's almost too fast. When you can't pull that trigger ever and not lift, and not get a wheelie out of it, yeah, that's pretty insane. Oh man, and it is so freaking cold. Hoo hoo, yeah. Okay, that was horrendous. One thing I'm noticing now with these tires, and I've often talked about how much I like these stock Corelli tires. They, uh, oh. Oh, 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 come on. All right, guys, we've got the Kakama home. It's back on the bench. It's all cleaned up. Obviously, it wasn't all that dirty because we didn't run it for very long, but you guys can let me know what you think of that. I've watched back that clip now multiple times, actually probably like 15 to 20 times. And to be fair to the truck, I do come in really, really hard on this back corner. And the way I'm hitting it is there was kind of nowhere for anything to go is probably the best way of explaining it. When you, when you come in this way, it's kind of hard to explain now, but when you're coming in this way, you got no room. There's no suspension. There's nothing. It just, it came in and that's why we broke the arm. We broke the guard we broke the bottom of the shock shaft as well as guys over there uh, i did bend i had my drive shaft or the dog bone had a huge kind of bend in it i've had it in the vice now i've been kind of working on it we almost have it straight again but that was about 60 bucks worth of damage now the order cost me 70 because i did order two arms one good thing i can say for corelli is their website shipping wasn't all that bad so i paid about 15 bucks canadian to get all the parts shipped to me what you guys need to understand is that here in canada we have canada post and you can't ship anything for like less than 20 bucks 22 bucks it doesn't matter if you're shipping a pinion so i have no problem paying that 15 bucks to get the parts i need hey that's cheaper than if i was ordering parts here in canada but again what do you guys think of that i've i kind of went through multiple sort of i you know my first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, that's bad. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, was it really that bad? Was it, you know, $60 worth bad? But the more I kept watching it, I thought, yeah, you know what? That's just on one of those unfortunate bad landings that takes a lot with it. And what I mean by that is it takes a lot of parts with it. You know, sometimes you send something and you land horrible and you might snap an arm. Unfortunately for me, you guys saw what I broke. Bit of a bummer. However, again, mentioning the shipping, that this part right now you guys are watching is like five six seven days later and i ordered those parts on a saturday because i broke the truck on a saturday and it's now thursday and the parts are going to arrive today so we're talking four business days you know what there's nothing wrong with that i'm i'm happy with that the truck overall guys was awesome it's stupid fast and i know it's hard to explain but when you're driving something 
and you know I'm trying to give you guys an idea of the trigger and you can never do this you're always just kind of like zing 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 and and your truck's wheeling and all you know flying that is fast now I may have made one mistake though before this run I had installed 500 thou into the center diff I was kind of thinking okay I've got big power it's going to want something like that to, to do what I want with the truck. And I'm thinking now that maybe 500 was too thick for this truck. So I may pull that center diff back out and drop 200 in it. We'll see. I often will do things that way. I usually don't go kind of extreme right away unless I 100% know. But I didn't even drive the truck. So there's a chance I could have drove it stock and maybe have been happy with it. I'm not sure. I just, again, guys, thinking of the size of this motor, I thought going with a thicker diff fluid would have been the way to go but either way though guys i was very happy with the truck it's very fast it handled awesome even with these 10 millimeter adapters the truck still turned the response was awesome it was quick it didn't require like a big turning circle or anything like that obviously with the diffs the way they are right now it's a little more open and it does allow it to turn better but i am impressed guys i, I i'm going to reserve judgment on the durability of it right now because it's hard to i don't want to come out right now and say oh you know the plastics are bad when one that was a horrible landing and two it was cold guys i was freezing that was i think maybe about minus two minus three celsius so that is cold and that is cold on plastics and for those that don't know cold plastics work the opposite of warm plastics so if you are in let's say the southern states or here in the summer and you're out and it's you know plus 25 plus 30 plus 20 i don't know what that is in fahrenheit but the plastics as they warm up they have a little bit more give but in the winter and in the cold they work the opposite they have no give and they just snap and you can see guys this arm just snapped it we, we snapped the arm the guard the bottom of the shock shaft or the rod in guys on the shock shaft it just went so again I'm going to reserve judgment, but that won't happen now till probably springtime, summertime, because, hey, it's cold here and there's nothing I can do about it. But we will get this thing back together. We will keep running it. We'll run it on paddles in the winter once the snow arrives and all that kind of fun stuff. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Personally, I'm going to fault myself. Uh, that was just a bad landing. Between the bad landing, the cold, you know, it was just unfortunately one of those landings that, like I mentioned, takes a few parts with you and costs you a couple of bucks to fix. But one thing, guys, I do need to definitely talk about is this radio quickly. So RC6GS from Radio Link, very impressed with it, even though it does look the way it looks. I mean, I can't personally, I've kind of gotten used to it now. It reminds me of, I think, a DX3 or a DX4 Pro back in the day. I can't really remember, but now that I have it, guys, and I've been using it, because at this time, I've, I've actually ran it in the Asuga. I've ran it in the Mojave for us as well. I'm impressed. It actually is comfortable. A lot of people talk about the, you know, the quality because it's all plastic. It would have been nice to see some kind of like rubber grip here or something like that. That definitely would have added to it. But again, for the price, very impressed. There's going to be, guys, a lot of content regarding this radio because it is impressing me. And being somebody who's always owned Futabas and Spectrums, spent you know the big money on those radios big money on receivers knowing that you can get what i have in here now a seven channel water splash proof 600 meter range receiver and right now it's on sale in canada for like 25 dollars is insane so again we're going to be covering that also on a high note another note i did pick up the rc8x it's being delivered today so I'm super pumped about that. But anyways, guys, I've rambled on long enough. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.